You love your booktube more than your main channel. Hi, hi guys. Um, today, as you can tell by the title, we're doing the assumptions about me video, which was trendy about two years ago. It's raining by the way, and for some reason the rain is really, really loud. So um, I hope if you hear it, it's just like ambiance. But anyway, um, I, and I did a video related to that trend um, two years ago, but I was more focused on assumptions about Korea because I'm sensitive and I'm scared and I didn't want people to make assumptions about me. I think that I'm stronger in my sense of self now that I can handle these. Also, you guys are the nicest people on earth. But yeah, it's a rainy day. It's kind of late, it's very dark, so I'm sorry that the lighting is strange, but I hope that this is just a cozy little chat in which you do not roast me, which is just great. I haven't ordered these, I'm just doing them via screenshot, so let's just start at the beginning. Let's just start off with my friend Yoon's dog's Instagram asking me, um, I don't like cats. I'm slightly, slightly allergic to cats. Does that mean that I don't like them? No. I love many cats, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just sneezy and gross. I got a couple people assuming that I smell a certain way. Someone said, I guess you smell really good because you're into smells and candles. And someone else said, let me find it. This might sound weird, but I feel like you smell like peaches mixed with spring. And to both of you, I'm not sure. Um, I'm currently wearing coconut vanilla deodorant and Kurt says that I often smell like bread, which I find a compliment. So yeah, I, I think I give off a like a bread smell. <laughs> you are at your limit regarding living in Seoul. I got a lot of questions about this. Like you want to leave Korea, you hate Korea, blah, blah, blah. No, um, I'm very, very, very happy here. I definitely, I've said this before, but I don't want to live in Korea my entire life. So I'm at the point where I'm so happy for the time that I've had here and any extra time is great, but I'm also really excited for whatever our next step is. You're not too friendly in person, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes and no, if, I, if you've ever met me and I haven't seemed nice, it's because I was nervous as hell and I was probably really quiet. I'm either like super awkward and just very quiet um, or I'm overly nice and Part of that is just my personality. Like I, I really like to make people feel comfortable because I like to feel comfortable. But I also blame my California upbringing because we definitely do have that where we're overly friendly, um, but it seems a little bit surface level. I don't know, people say that it seems surface level, but I feel like, at least in my part of California, most people are actually genuinely that nice except for the rich moms in Del Mar, because when I worked at the farmer's market, boy howdy, they were not nice. So <laughs> yeah, I would say, um, yes, I am nice in person, and I think Californians get a bad rep for being nice. There's nothing wrong with being nice. <laughs> You're constantly striving to achieve things. Yes, um, I'm a Capricorn, but also slight pitch here for a podcast. Michael from Lessons from the Screenplay and Beyond the Screenplay is my favorite person in the world, but it was my first time listening to his podcast and they were talking about soul and how anyway they got on the subject of how it's almost a good thing that humans are never really satisfied because if we were completely happy all the time we wouldn't strive to achieve or change or improve anything so i'm personally trying to find a good balance between always trying to achieve something and always having a goal um but also not obsessing over it. So yeah, I uh, I do. I'm constantly striving. You are very open and make new friends easily. I think I'm very open. Like even with strangers, I can pretty much tell them my life story. I don't really mind. Making new friends easily is really hard for me because I'm not very good at the follow-up. Like if we meet once and it's great, I'm so bad at asking to meet up again because I always feel like the other person is probably really busy and I, I just don't know like when or how, I don't know, I'm just a bad, I'm bad at it. If we lost connection, if we haven't met up in a while, um, please reach out to me because I will say yes. Um, I'm just, I'm horrible at making new friends. My old friends are stuck with me for 
life. You don't really like to cook. And someone else said that I don't cook, I always order. Uh, um, I love to cook. Specifically, I love to bake. But just because of my kitchen, like our teeny tiny counter space and stuff like that, no access to an oven, two little burners that you can't even fit two pans on at once, it makes me a little bit frustrated when I go home when I'm in America and I have my like family's kitchen I love it I've even taken like proper cooking classes and stuff I, I really love it but um I don't love cooking in Korea so yes I do I either make really simple things like you've seen um or yeah we do go out and order a lot because it's cheap here as opposed to in the US you want a pet Oh my god, I have been sending Kurt this one dog. Wait, 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 we're just gonna talk about it. We're gonna pull this dog up. She is living safe and sound. She's in a foster home. Okay, are you guys ready for this? I don't think you're ready. Look at this angel. Can you see? Look. Oh. Oh. She is five years old, has a Welsh corgi body, um, a pretty fox face, and then sujebi ears. So like the sujebi is like pulled noodles basically. So she has like noodle ears. I just think it's so cute. She knows that she's so beautiful. Look at that. Oh, so anyway, yeah, I do want a pet, but just right now it doesn't make sense for us because again, we don't really know where we're going to be in a couple of years. We're planning on moving, so, so we don't want to force a dog to go through that kind of stress. So we're happy to just foster when we can. Oh, you dye your hair to keep it red. No, and I got so many questions about dyeing my hair. I've dyed my hair colors. I want to dye my hair. Here's a scoop. I always wanted to dye my hair, yes. I love that I'm a redhead. It's such a huge part of my identity. If I like woke up one day and I was a different color, I would lose my mind. I don't dye my hair, but I do, I did start using this really cool shampoo. Um, if any redheads are watching this, it's a company based in the UK called Gingerful and they focus on making shampoo and conditioner for redheads and it has the slightest hint of henna in it. So it just takes your natural reds or your dyed red um, and makes it that much brighter. Um, you really notice it in the light. It's gorgeous. It smells great. It's vegan. It's cruelty free. It's in um, like a biodegradable sugar cane bottle. Basically, they ticked all of my boxes. Um, yeah, I love them. Not sponsored. I've been using it for about a month more than a month but yeah no i've always wanted to, to dye my hair lime green or like a very light pale green and then i did dye um just one streak of my hair down here um i dyed it mint blue for pretty much all of college i used manic panic um never made a dent in that pot of manic panic you are an introvert yes i i am an infj INFJ. Yes, that's what I am. You sleep eight hours every night. Well, let me tell you, um, I got myself a Fitbit. We can go through my sleep score <laughs> right here. I'm shocked. I thought I slept a lot more. I pretty much sleep six to seven hours. There's like one, the, uh, where's Thursday? blame Joe Biden for that one. I stayed up for the, <laughs> the inauguration, but there was one day where I got, yeah, look at that. Mmm. Slept like nine, 10 hours. Gorgeous. But yeah, no, normally I sleep, um, seven is good, but I'm usually in the six hour range, which is shocking to me. You're Canadian. I am in fact from the United States of America. You miss having a full-time job at an office. Ooh, yes and no. I would love to honestly like work in a co-working space or something like that because I do really miss kind of that creative energy of having other people working on similar projects with you all day. Or even just if you need a break, you can get up and like bother someone at their desk, which maybe I shouldn't do at a co-working space. But for me working at home, there are often times where I don't stand up for like five hours. <laughs> I love being the boss of my own time, but I do really miss having other creative minds around me and working on things as a team, you know? You're a night owl. Ooh, no. <laughs> I used to be a total early bird and I'm most productive in the morning, but Kurt, is a night owl. We've been married, what, two years? 
and I'm already, I'm like, I stay up an hour later each year. So by the time we hit like our 10 year anniversary, I'm just not gonna sleep and I'm scared. Someone said, you're small height, but someone else said, I'm tall. I am five foot four, 163 centimeters. I was supposed to be tall. Um, the doctors, when I was born, the doctors said that I was supposed to be really tall and I am shorter than both of my parents. I am one of the shortest members of my extended family, except for my Grammy, who is like 90. <laughs> so, and she's shrinking. So yeah, I am I would call myself more on the small side. You don't know how to drive. Um, uh, I do, <laughs> but I don't like it. I was literally just talking to my friend about this the other day. There is this tiny little strip of the 101 PCH, Pacific Coast Highway, whatever you want to call it. The area that I live in, the 101 is quite small. It's like two lanes each way, 35 miles an hour. I love driving on that. That is my dream road. Roll the windows down, put the music on, space out. I love it. Any other street. <laughs> I hate, I hate driving, I really do. You swear much more behind camera. Um, yes and no. I think, again, it's one of those things where I kind of reflect what the people around me do because I don't know what makes them feel comfortable. But yeah, I would say my mom's from New Jersey. So I was raised that way. So if you know, you know. <laughs> you were the smart but quiet kid in school. Actually, I was the smart but loud kid in school. <laughs> I was the person the teacher had to separate from their friends, you know, but I was a good student so they couldn't even really yell at me. I was kind of a teacher's pet too, so. I love my teachers. It wasn't like a, I'm trying to be a teacher's pet. It was like my teachers were rad. So yeah. <laughs> you cry very easily. Yeah, I'm pretty much on the verge of tears at all times. Literally anything can set me off. People in groups doing the same thing, like if, if there's a lot of applause or even like flash mobs, it's so stupid. But um, yeah, I cry. I cry for flash mobs. So yeah, I cry very easily. You love your booktube more than your main channel. The thing is my booktube, it's so easy for me to be super stoked about whatever I'm talking about with this channel because organically how my day is going, it's not guaranteed that it's gonna be super fun every single time. So I think booktube is just, it's like that best friend that's always got your back, you know? but this channel is like my adventurous friend that it's a mixed bag, you never know. So I love you both, don't worry. <laughs> you believe in star signs, but not in blood type. Ooh, um, I'm not super into astrology. I do think that my birth chart is creepy, creepy on point for me. I am a Capricorn moon, ugh, no. I am a Capricorn sun, Scorpio moon, Sagittarius rising. I will link my full birth chart down below. And Kurt is like dripping in Virgo. I mean, ridiculous. I do think it's fun and I do think sometimes it is very accurate, but I'm not, I don't think that it's like the gospel truth, you know? For blood types, I really don't care. I am a positive, so is Kurt. And actually our CEO, um, for the company that we both worked at, um, really didn't like A types. Yeah, whenever we brought up blood sign or blood types, she would get kind of weird with us. <laughs> and I'd be like, girl, calm down. <laughs> you have no food allergies. I don't, yeah, I don't think I do. Doesn't like to swim. I like to swim. I am just really scared of sharks and any kind of underwater creature. And I've also been caught in a riptide before. Yeah, I don't like to swim in the ocean. I do like to swim in pools as long as I check that there are no sharks in the pool, which I still do. I am 28 years old, no, I'm 29. I am 29 years old and I am still checking the deep end of swimming pools for sharks. <laughs> you were a choir or band kid in school. I was a band kid, I played the alto sax and I love it so much. You don't like to travel with Kurt. Ah, um, Kurt has, a <laughs> Kurt has a very different travel style than I do. So I just need to be in the mentality that I'm traveling with Kurt. For me, if I'm going on a solo trip, I'm like, I plan it out. I know exactly where I'm gonna go. I have all these ideas. We're gonna just go, 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 go. Um, but Kurt is like, let's take a stroll. And so we kind of, when we travel together, we kind of meet in the middle. Being so used to solo travel, it was an adjustment period. <laughs> you were disputed about academics or arts in school. 
Um, no, I knew that I wasn't good at art. <laughs> I love art, but I don't have the amount of talent that I think you need. I don't have the eye. I just don't have that natural affinity to art. Affinity! Dang it! That was the word I was looking for. Uh, I just filmed a video about books, mostly because her um, affiliation, that's not the word I'm looking for. It was affinity. Anyway, I think the people who go into the arts when it comes to school are so brave because that's just a thing like academics, you can study. Even if you aren't good at something, you can study and memorize and get through it. But with the arts, you really need something just in there or in here, wherever it is. So if you are studying um, the arts or even if you want to study it and you aren't, but you are at heart an artist, um, I am in awe. I am in awe of you. You wanted to have a goth phase, but never did. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was like way, I was like the only kid at school um, in the beginning who was really into MCR. I remember this one guy who I'm not gonna name because he builds parts for airplanes now and I'm not gonna mess with a man who is in charge of airplanes. He would just make fun of me so much for liking MCR. And then one day he came up to me and he was like, hang him high, so good. And I was like, and after that, Whoa, people started to like MCR and um, they weren't mean to me anymore about wearing all black. But yeah, I definitely did the all black thing, but I wouldn't go so far as to say I was goth. I was as close as a suburban goody two shoes teacher's pet could be. <laughs> you love doing things alone even though you are married. True. You are shy to show on video you speaking slash interacting with other locals in Korean. Full sentences. Yes, but also I don't like recording other people speaking that much. I get so nervous about speaking that I don't even think to take my camera out, first of all, is the thing. So yeah, pretty right. Okay, I like this one. Um, you're low-key conservative, parentheses, not a bad thing. I come from a conservative family, haha. -ha. So I was actually thinking about this and talking with one of my friends um, about this recently. Technically, I come from a relatively progressive family. Now I've realized that I was definitely raised with that like progressive middle, is that what it's called? Um, like the middle left. Okay, sorry, my camera died. Um, but yeah, so certain ideas just never even occurred to me. So for example, abolishing the police, I am on board now and I now that I understand it and I get it, but if you had asked me in probably 2019 without explaining it, just you know, cold turkey asked me. I, I literally never even considered it. Yeah, that's something that I did realize this year is that even though I feel like I'm kind of on board for anything, if it's explained to me and made sense, there are things that I have never considered in my life. And um, yeah, so I guess in a way, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say conservative, but I would definitely say like middle ground um, until it's until it's taught to me. And I'm doing my own research, don't worry. But yeah, that was just something that I, I thought about um, recently and it was interesting that you asked that. You are an older sister. I am not, I'm an only child. <laughs> You've never done drugs, not in a good, bad connotation, just a vibe. Um, yeah, I don't, actually, and then someone said that I smoked weed just once. Both of my batteries are dead, so we're gonna just juggle them, um, until we finish. I don't like anything that alters, call me a control freak if you want, alters kind of my control of my body, so that's why, um, I can probably count on one hand the amount of times that I've been really drunk, like, not just tipsy. So yeah, no, no, that's not me. <laughs> you don't like it when people call you by your full name. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like my full name. My full name is Carolyn. Um, if you want to learn more about me, I have a 50 facts about me up here and pretty much my mom and then my New Jersey relatives, some of them call me that, but they say Carolyn instead of Carolyn. They say Carolyn or Carrie, which I like. Honestly, I dig. But yeah, no, um, it's either my mom is angry with me or it's someone who hasn't seen me since the fourth grade. They built a new elementary school um, while I was still in elementary school. So I had a lot of kids that I went to third grade with and then we split up and then met again in high school. And so there were a handful of kids that would still call me Carolyn because they knew me from third grade. And I'd be like, get with the program, Thomas. My name is Carrie now. But anyway, um, yeah, Thomas, he never grew out of it. He knew me in high school for four years and he still called, he was the only person that called me Carolyn. <sighs> anyway, 
I'm over it. It doesn't, doesn't bother me that much. You love California. I really do. I'm so, I'm so thankful that I grew up there. This one was so random. You are unable to chug anything carbonated or maybe you can. Um, I actually don't drink anything carbonated. I have just barely started to be able to handle it. But um, yeah, carbonation on my tongue, it hurts. Yeah, the only time I'll drink like vodka tonic, I would say is the only, like gin and tonic vodka tonic are the only things that I drink that are carbonated and I don't really drink, so. Ooh, I got this. Um, you don't speak Korean well and then you're less fluent in languages than we think. I hope you don't think that I'm fluent in any language other than English because I'm not. Um, I would say for understanding, um, Korean and Spanish, my listening skills are the best. Strangely enough, I'm most comfortable speaking in Korean just because I've forgotten all the vocabulary for Spanish. Hungarian, don't even talk to me about Hungarian. God, beautiful language, impossible to learn. I'm still like vaguely studying it for fun, but um, man, I'm very nervous to speak in any language other than English. So yeah, please don't think that I'm fluent in anything. Even English, honestly. You've dressed up for a midnight premiere. Oh, my friends and I did dress up. I don't think it was a midnight premiere, but we did dress up to go see the last Harry Potter. And we all dressed up as students. And then my one friend, Casey Pham, hey there, I couldn't find the picture. If I had the picture, I would have totally shared it. But um, he came as a Dementor. <laughs> he just came with a black sheet over his head. Um, so I have a funny, I have funny memories of dressing up for movies, but I don't think it was a midnight premiere. And last but not least, this one, you are judgmental about loud slash party people and don't let them into your close circle. Ooh. Um, no, I actually, one of my, um, my roommates in college, my senior year was like the party queen. She was literally the bartender, um, of our like college bar. So I adore people like that. I recognize that it's not my style. I like to be in pajamas by 10, um, unless I'm at a concert and that is how I roll. But I actually really liked especially living with people like that because I could honestly have the apartment to myself for most of the night. And then I'm the kind of person that I, even with Kurt still, like I can't fall asleep until everybody is back home safely or like I know where they are. So it was fun to be able to like Friday, Saturday nights, have the apartment to myself, have little dance parties, cook, clean, whatever, and then make sure that all my friends got home safely and you know, I could make them tea afterwards and we could chat and they would tell me everything that was going on. So I, I do love, um, I suppose, party people. I love party people that respect that I'm not a party person and they understand that maybe like once a month, if that, I'll come out with them. So yeah, I would say I love them. I have no, no issues, but it just so happens that my very, very close circle of friends we aren't those type of people because we're close because we hang out when everybody else is partying, I guess. But that's it anyway. The sun has set, it is dark now. Sorry about this lighting. Actually, it's kind of cozy. But yeah, I uh, I had fun with this. Thank you so much. And yeah, we're gonna have a snow day again this week. This is the craziest winter. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. If I missed any of yours, I'm sorry. I will catch you guys next time, probably a vlog because I'm just gonna go run around in the snow and it's gonna be great. So, all right. Stay safe. I love you all. Bye.